I will talk about the uh, MBBOX project. Uh, it was a CP initiative. Uh, my name is Michal Konečny. I'm part of the CP team. I work as software engineer. It was initiative, uh, MBBOX was initiative uh, in the second quarter, quarter for the CP team. It was one of them. Okay, so let's start. Okay, this uh, presentation will have three parts. Uh, first, I will talk about what is MBBOX. I'm sure that plenty of people are don't uh, not familiar what it is. Uh, then I will talk about the team behind the MBBOX. And uh, lastly, I will talk about the uh, actual work we did. So let's start. Okay, so uh, the MB box was originally created by your former colleague, Patrick. Uh, I don't try to pronounce his last name because I will fail. Um, we, uh, this was originally a Python script he wrote for uh, to, uh, to actually have uh, easy way to deploy uh, the MB box itself. Uh, he did this manually before and we de he decided to write a Python script. It was actually just uh, some script that was uh, calling, uh, uh, calling uh, origin client and doing the work for him. Not uh, anything that actually checked if everything is working and uh, how it is. Uh, Okay, the MB box itself has few parts. Uh, it actually has uh, five parts, but uh, there are two applications in it. The first one is Koji, which is uh, which manages the mod module builds, but uh, doesn't do them actually. This is done by the MBS. The Koji has uh, three small components. There is Koji Builder which is uh, used uh, in the MB box for creating new repositories. There is Koji Hub, which is a web interface and uh, you can actually see what uh, is uh, uh, being built. Uh, and the last thing is Kojira, which is uh, working with uh, different build route. Uh, then we have MBS, uh, which has two components in uh, the MB box and uh, is MBS, MBS front-end and MBS back-end. The MBS front-end is actually just uh, this Apache uh, application that is, uh, doing, that, is, uh, uh, that is the web interface for the MBS back-end and the MBS back-end doing the actual work. Uh, they are communicating by sending uh, messages between them uh, and they are using fed message uh, and uh, we tried to create to use the federal messaging so it was something uh, about the uh, mb box itself the system or the wall system is uh, created to actually have the easy deployment of the module building system in any infrastructure you want and know about the team that was working on the initiative. We were three. Uh, there was Adam, Sh Adam Saleh, Leonardo Rossetti, and uh, me. Uh, you can see our IRC Nick if you have any question or something about the MB box, uh, just ask us on the free node. We are usually in uh, Fedora apps. Uh, channel. Okay, what was our goal for the for this initiative? Our goal was to make deployment of MBBOX that is easy, easy to deploy in the OpenShift. Uh, we wanted to replace Fed messages with federal messaging. Uh, we wanted to use existing certificate authority and existing messaging system because uh, the original script deployed their own certificate authority, their own messaging system. So it had pl plenty of things that uh, could be used from the actual infrastructure that is, that is running. Uh, 
we decided to work on it and why we decided to create an operator. For those that doesn't know what is operator, it's uh, just uh, uh, some unseeable playbook that is deploying the wall, uh, the wall solution you want. Uh, we um, wanted to go with templates into original request, but uh, decided to not go with it because the templates are deprecated in OpenShift 4 and uh, there was uh, there was aim to be deployable in OpenShift 4. The operator worked both on Kubernetes and OpenShift. There are some things that uh, are not uh, in Kubernetes, but are in OpenShift, but uh, you could uh, use both or, uh, or uh, operator was actually tested on the Kubernetes the whole time we tested on OpenShift uh, at the end of uh, uh, your development cycle because uh, we needed uh, someone to provide us a free node and the Kubernetes was easy to test. Uh, the operator is configurable by admin. You have uh, custom resource, uh, uh, custom resource files that you can actually edit and add your own configuration. Uh, we decided to go with uh, the full configurable um, configurable uh, operator, so you have ability to actually switch to your own configuration for any component that is part of the MB box. And there is predefined deployments of pods, which uh, which uh, was I what I was talking at the start, the operator is deploying the wall uh, thing for you. Um, in our case, we don't have, uh, we don't have uh, right now something that will do the, all the work for you, but uh, you need to deploy them one by one but uh, everything is uh, designed to work together and tested to work together. So, next slide. Okay, so there are plenty of technologies we, dis we used when we work on the um, operator. Uh, the technologies are, uh, some of them were new for me because I never worked with the with the operator before. Uh, the Minikube was one of them. I had some uh, some experience with OpenShift, but uh, not with the Kubernetes. The Zool was new for me. It was uh, what we decided to use for the, uh, uh, for the CI system. Uh, we wanted to go with the CentOS CI, but uh, Zool uh, allowed us to have more freedom we needed. Uh, we write the wall, uh, wall operator into Ansible. We decided to go for the, with the Ansible because uh, the team was familiar with it. And uh, this is the second most major uh, operator, um, operator language you can use. The first is uh, Go, but uh, we didn't have any experience with Go. So we decided to go with Ansible and it's uh, high, widely used in the CP team, so there will be easier for anyone to actually manage it or maintain it if there is any need for it. Uh, we used Molecule for testing. I never used uh, that before this project. I didn't know there is uh, such nice tool for testing of the Ansible code. It is actually running, uh, is providing some uh, some data for the for deployment uh, for the Ansible playbooks and then trying to uh, just run them. And you can assert if uh, everything is done uh, how you want it. Uh, the test when you wanted to, when you want to uh, do the wall deployment takes around, I think, 10 minutes. So it's not something you will want to run every time, but uh, it's good that you can actually test if your Ansible code do, is doing what you need. 
Uh, we used the Quay IO for image hosting. Uh, the most uh, problematic in this was Koji because uh, there isn't any any actual container is at Koji. So we created one by uh, uh, by Vineyard or in this project. So you can actually uh, you can. Uh, find Koji Hub or Koji Builder on the Quay.io. They are publicly accessible if you want them to use for anything else. They are, they are there. Uh, we used background for the development environment. Uh, this is used in uh, another few projects and it's nice that it uh, creates everything for you and you just uh, you can actually work uh, from the, um, just uh, do background app and then work on the on the project itself. So let's go for next slide. Okay. So we started by creating the development environment. This actually started before even uh, the project itself and the initiative itself. Uh, the background uh, is running Minikube and OSDK, which is operator SDK. It's designed, it's a tool that is actually uh, creating the roles for you and uh, you can use it uh, to test your operator. Uh, there also was a second environment in Vagrant. Um, uh, there are called boxes, I think, in Vagrant for the Python script itself. So there were two we decided to remove the Python things at the end. But uh, if you look at the history in the repository of MBBox, you can find it. Uh, so if you uh, ever want to run uh, run operator SDK uh, development environment in Wagrant, uh, you can use our repository and uh, our Ansible playbooks for deploying to Vagrant with it. Uh, there is also manual deployment, which is uh, des described in our documentation. I will have the links at the end of the of this presentation. Um, and uh, I could put, put the link uh, to at, at least, uh, Okay, I can put the link at to, to the GitHub repository in the chat so you can, if anybody wants to look at it, can. There will be a link at the end of this presentation, but I'm not sure where I actually have, uh, I have it uploaded to my GitHub repo, but uh, I'm not sure if it will be uploaded somewhere in the nest. Uh, I see the question. This is one of the things that uh, we didn't do yet because uh, the, this is uh, right now we are, uh, we, we, uh, we gave this, uh, we gave the work we did to the CentOS stream team, which was, uh, which uh, was the one who originally needed it. And uh, we are waiting for some feedback and there are a few things that needs to be done before we, uh, we upload it to the operator hub. So right now it's deployable. There is uh, documentation how to deploy it into OpenShift uh, or into Kubernetes, but uh, uh, there it isn't available in the operator hub. Okay. Okay. So next part we worked on is uh, was Koji. Uh, the Koji actually took most of the time we spent on the MB box because uh, there were we decided to go with separate roles for Koji components. Uh, the Koji Hub and Koji Builder were very difficult ones. The Koji Hub. Uh, the Koji Hub uh, was never uh, done to run in uh, in the container, so we uh, s needed to solve uh, very much of the issues that there was. It was critical because every other uh, 
component that is actually in uh, in the MB box is uh, communicating with it. And uh, the Koji Builder was the first we tried to get done. And uh, it was hard to get it actually communicate with uh, Koji Hub because uh, of uh, of the certificates and other things we, uh, we weren't aware of. We got uh, some help from the Koji team, which was really helpful and uh, really helped us out. Uh, and when we get these two running, the Kojira was easy one. So this was uh, the most problematic and even the MBS, we didn't uh, take us that much time. So the part three is the MBS. We have uh, for both of the components are separate roles. All of this is in the, in the GitHub repo. You could uh, look at it. It uh, has two parts, as I said, there is MBS front end and MBS back end. Uh, we decided to create all, um, also so, uh, some shared uh, shared uh, role for the for some of the components because the, most of the components used the Koji, uh, Koji mount point. So we decided to uh, create a shared uh, uh, shared roles that is deploying this only once and not for every component. Uh, the MBS had plenty of shared uh, configuration configuration options. So we decided to create a uh, shared role for it. So it was uh, really good to have this because it cleaned the code a little and uh, help us to get the things faster deployed. Okay. And the last thing we uh, we did was to uh, give all of this together. Uh, we created the role for the shared attributes, as I said before. We uh, updated documentation, so documentation should be up to date. The everything in the documentation should uh, wo should be uh, should work. If you want to try it, deploy it, there should be. Uh, there is a uh, 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 guide how to do it. If you want to contribute to it, there is uh, there is guide for it. So, and there is uh, there is also uh, a description of every configurable uh, option in the MB box. So you could look at uh, any component you need and uh, just uh, look what every uh, configuration option uh, uh, does and what uh, you need to set there. There are some default values. So you, uh, if you want to just deploy it, you can use the default values. It will actually deploy uh, for you the certification authority. Uh, if you don't uh, uh, specify one, and it will also deploy their own uh, uh, Fed Message Hub and uh, RabbitMQ cluster if uh, to be able to send the messages if you don't uh, specify one. Um, the last part, last thing we did with the, was the testing deployment in CentOS OpenShift cluster. Took us a few days to actually have it deployed because there was uh, some issue we didn't saw before. Uh, but at the end, we got it running. We didn't. Uh, we let the CentOS stream team to test it because uh, they know how this should work. We actually did only the deployment, and uh, it was really nice to have it and see that everything is look everything works like it should. So, uh, okay, we have, yeah. Okay, here is uh, the things that we uh, want to work on next. It, uh, there is another initiative in the CP backlog that is uh, called the MB, MB box phase two, which will take care of this. Not sure if we will be in, in the, the same team will be uh, in this, but um, we will see. Uh, so 
the first thing is make it available in public operator repository. We want to be sure that it's working like it should. So we are waiting for the feedback. Uh, we want the automatic image build on the release of components. Um, if there is a new version of Koji or new version of MBS, we would be glad to have automatically built image and uploaded to the QAIO so we could just, uh, just uh, um, download it and uh, use it. Uh, automatic update in running operator is something that uh, is possible. Uh, we didn't have it right now because uh, without the automatic uh, image building, it doesn't make sense. Uh, so if you uh, get the image there, it should automatically deploy, but this is the future thing, not, uh, not now, uh, not working right now. We need to do some OpenShift optimization, uh, which will be based on the feedback from the CentOS stream team. Fedora support, messaging support for MBS. The MBS is still using FedMessage and there, there have plans for Fedora messaging, but didn't uh, have uh, time to look at it yet. And the last thing is the master component. This should be a component, a component for uh, deploying uh, the whole thing in one uh, step. Right now you need to do deployment uh, by co component by component, but this should uh, help you to deploy everything at once. Okay, I think this is my last slide. Okay, so I will look at the question. Oh, okay. Uh, I see from Neil that there is uh, the disk kit for a solution with disk kit. Because this was uh, requested by the CentOS stream team, they didn't need it to disk it. They just wanted the uh, uh, MB um, module building. So this is why it is. But uh, in the future, there is option that we actually create uh, uh, operators for another applications we use in the infrastructure. It will be much easier to deploy them in the in our own infra, but uh, this is just uh, just an idea. Not sure if uh, we will go with it and where we find the time to do it. Um, there are no other operators for the other services. Just like I said, we it will be nice to have them. This was the first operator uh, in the CP team we created. So it will be nice to have, so have another for, uh, let's say, this git or not sure what other data grapper, data number, some services, some other services. Pagur operator would be would be cool. Not sure if uh, this will be part of the CP team because we want to get rid of Pagur. We will to, we want to set uh, use the or not to get rid, but we don't want to maintain it. So not sure if we will do any other work for it. Uh, but it will be a nice nice idea, Neil. Uh, at the first glance, the operators looks pretty tricky. Uh, if uh, if we, we started looking, I was really glad that we have Leonardo in the team because he actually uh, had some experience with uh, Kubernetes operators. Uh, but at the uh, uh, but at the start, I was just lost. I didn't know where to start, what to do, and just uh, tried to use the work that was done in other operators. So just uh, work, uh, go with it. Uh, and simple playbooks for Pagur. Uh, yeah, as Leo said, it could be used but uh, it could be used for the operator, but uh, for some uh, degree. We actually 
I'm not sure if we used uh, any Ansible playbook for the operator for MBBox. Even if the, the Koji is actually, I think only we looked at them, but uh, didn't use anything from them. But yeah, because it's Ansible based, based you can use at least uh, some part of it, some configuration, some deployment things. You can use the deployment config, you can use the secrets, the definition, you can use, uh, I'm not sure what is, uh, image stream is only usable for the uh, OpenShift. So if you want to use or, uh, at, uh, or image stream, you can, but uh, it is uh, better if you want to use it uh, also in Kubernetes, the image stream couldn't be used. You can also use uh, at, uh, uh, not sure how it is called, uh, the uh, networking configuration and the configuration itself, the configuration of the app, uh, how this uh, config deployment, I think. Ah, deployment config, yeah. Uh, yeah, not sure. Uh, Operator Hub, but I think the Operator Hub is actually managed by Kubernetes team. So I think you need to be uh, Kubernetes, you need to work in Kubernetes. Uh, the OpenShift, the Kubernetes operator actually works in OpenShift out of the box. So if you it's working in Kubernetes, it should work in the OpenShift. Okay, we, uh, the time, is gone for us. So thank you everyone. And uh, I will just post here one, one, one other link that is uh, for the blog post I wrote about the MB box itself. You can, there should be the same information I just shared with you. You can look at them. Uh, and thank you for uh, attending this talk. <laughs>